Hey, what's up, players? Chicago and I back again, and today we're going to do another in our series for Intel Bytes, where I go over some of the uh, uh, more OS int, cyber threat intelligence, privacy related topics. And today we're going to go over Shodan. Now, another video we had done earlier uh, went over what they call Google Dorks, where you use Google advanced search terms to be able to find some information that eh, they may not know that you're actually, you know, looking for that information or administrators may not realize that some of these things are public facing and uh, able to get some information that way. Now, uh, Shodan is a little bit sim similar, but a little bit different where you, it actually port scans like the entire internet <laughs> where if I were to get all public facing devices, this is what Shodan will allow me to search. Um, I will say disclaimer before we begin here that, just searching for things in and of itself are not illegal, but once you start, you know, tapping into um, open dashboards for for you know Cisco routers and things like that, and start messing around with somebody's router settings or a water treatment plant in Portugal or something to that effect, that's getting into illegal territory there. So you know, use this obviously with caution, but this is for uh, this is great for checking your own self or your own company to see what do you actually have publicly exposed to the internet that a, uh, an attacker would be able to grab information gathering wise. So Shodan, it was, it's been around for a while, but when it first came out, it was the, it was the hotness at the time. They called it the most dangerous search engine, gave it some sexy terms on news outlets and all that garbage. Um, but yeah, essentially for security researchers, this is a, this is a great tool. Now with the free version that you sign up with, you're limited on the results that you get back and how many searches you can do per day. So I'm hoping I don't run out of any limit today while I'm teaching this. Um, I, I don't think I will because I haven't searched anything today. So we're going to be taking this all from uh, just just from the get go. Haven't really practiced anything or tried any different uh, terms or anything. But we're going to go over different filters that can be used and then also look at the explore section as well. Um, but the paid version is definitely well worth it because especially if you do this for a living, if you're doing the security research and all that kind of stuff or threat intel, uh, the paid version is great. And sometimes like on, you know, black Fridays or, uh, July 4th specials or something like that on their Twitter account, I've seen them give away lifetime memberships for like five bucks. And I always miss those sucks, but <laughs> Whatever it does show up again, so it'd be, it'd be wise to maybe follow their Twitter. <laughs> uh, but they do do that occasionally where they give some deals, discount deals on the actual community edition. I mean, the uh, pro, pro edition. All right, so let's get right down to uh, business and get uh, see what we can knock out here. So we're going to start with some very basic stuff. Um, for instance, if I wanted to find a search for throughout the world, by the way, of any server that was Apache 2 dot whatever, and I'm, and I'm copy and pasting this stuff so I don't have to type anything in. Um, so if I want to look specifically for Apache 2.2.3s that are in the world anywhere, then I would use the server colon and then put the Apache in quotes, similar to how Google does it when you're looking for a specific search, and then click search. And what this will do is it will look out there and it will find any ones that it finds through its massive port scan that it's done uh, for anything that's running Apache 2.2.3. So in this case here, it looks like we have 960,000 results. The top countries that do have these servers uh, looks like it looks to be the United States. Some of the top ports are listed here as well. But over here on this side here, you start to see some different information. So in other words, when they're doing their probes, it gets information based off of how the response is from that server. In this case here, a 200 OK would indicate, yes, it did connect to this particular Apache. Now, whether or not it was able to do anything with it or not, you know, is regardless. But in this particular case, what's pretty awesome is they also show a, a vulnerabilities section here in Shodan. Um, some 302s, a 401 authorization required, because you're not breaking in, right? I mean, you're not actually... Uh, brute force and to get into a system. So some of the results may show up as 401 authorization required, things like that. A lot of 302s. Then we have another 200 OK right here. So this one here says it's possibly a honeypot, <laughs> which is interesting to know. But let's just take a look at one just to see. 
So we'll click on that. And here, yeah, you can probably tell this is a honeypot because of how many ports are open and uh, visible here. But here is an example of what you would see on a typical result. And you can actually try to connect directly to it with this little link that's listed right here. In this case here, it's given us full information. And again, if this wasn't a honeypot and this was a real server, we could then get some information from the actual server header right there about what's on there. It looks like it's a Tversity media server. Um, and you can look at the version number and then go look and exploit DB to see if anything's going on. Uh, but Shodan has added this pretty cool thing. They didn't have this last time, like a long time ago when I first started using it way back in the day. But this is pretty cool where they start breaking out and seeing the results of what they found and then matching that to particular vulnerabilities. So it's pretty awesome. You can also go ahead and zoom in, I guess. Um, where is it at? I think it's uh, raw data, maybe? No. Need, need to view raw data. You need a membership. But one of them, I forget what it was, um, where you can, actually law, you can actually go to the Google map of it and see it in real time. But anyways, regardless, looks like all of these are honeypots supposedly. But anyways, that's an example of looking for a specific Apache version. And I just picked that one randomly. Uh, but there are vulnerabilities with that particular one. Now, in this case here, we're seeing this one doesn't show up as a honeypot. So it's possible that this is, you know, a legit deal. And if you click on it, again, it shows forbidden, but it does tell us they are using 2.2.3. So when you're actually running your own web server in your own company, it is wise to either disable banners or to fool the bad guy is to put a different banner. For example, what I, what I usually recommend for people is if you are going to use banners and it is a, let's just pretend it's a Windows IIS server for some odd reason that you've lost your mind and decided to use one. <laughs> let's just say you did. Putting in Apache 2.2.3 as the banner would actually um, be useful in the case that it may throw the attacker off um, because they're going to be looking for exploits specific to Apache and specific probably to Linux. Um, so that's one way you can kind of stick it to them, I guess, a little bit there if you want, or just disable banners, and you won't be able to see it. In this case here, that's what banner grabbing is used for, so we can find out information such as that. And we also see there's a few different other ports that are open listed on here, right? So this one here for NTP time, so we know that one's listed there. Uh, looks like they're running a MySQL. So this is a good way to fingerprint whatever your target is in this particular case. Okay, um, So that's one way that you can search for that. Another thing you can do is you can actually try to tie it specifically to a host name. So if I wanted to find all Apache servers where, where the host name shows up either in the location for a 302 redirect as Google, well, then I would say server colon, just give the name Apache. And then host name is the, is the search uh, advanced query to look specifically for Google in this particular case here. So we'll do a search, see what, see what we get. And again, sometimes these may or may not show results depending on whatever my account is. And it shows very limited amount of views based on my account. So it looks like there's 1,022 of these that are running Apache. And uh, you can see there the Google listed right on there. Um, and again, like I said, if you go ahead and click on any of these like that, it will actually take you to this particular one here, hostname google.com. Here's the city. And then right there, if I wanted to click on that, it will bring me to that exact web server listed on there. But here we see the Apache version. We can look that up in uh, exploit DB to verify if there are any vulnerabilities. So that's how you can search specifically by host name. Another way you can do it is if you happen to know maybe their ISP or you happen to know what country they're in or net block. So when it comes to net blocks, you have what they, uh, the, I think it's, oh, what is it? I'm trying to remember now <laughs> the name of IANA, I-A-N-A. They assign these different net blocks and uh, each, there's, there's different areas of the world that have different net blocks. Like for, for North America, for United States, Aaron is the one we use here. And then there's APNIC and there's Ripe NCC and all these other ones. So if I wanted to specifically search for a net block in particular, because I happen to know that this is the net block and I want to get a, a pinpoint down to an exact address, you can also use this. Now I've done this before on my own net block at home. I'm not going to do it here, but I was actually able to pull every single um, public facing router. And again, don't think that this is uh, finding your computer at home 
but it is probably finding your router because your router being public face. And in this case, also, if you run a NAS device of any type and it's open or not blocked behind anything, that also will show as well. So if I happen to know this particular person lives on what particular street at this particular net block and he has a NAS driver, this is what I would start searching with. I would do the net and I would get down to the actual net block. In this case, being a slash 16 shows that, that this area is Kansas City. And uh, that's where I would try to find different IP addresses. And I had used this to actually find my IP address and look at my actual, on the Google Maps there, it showed my actual house. <laughs> so it was kind of creeping me out a little bit there, but uh, it's all good. It's all good. Um, but yes, yeah, so some of these may not have any data because there may not be web servers or servers of any, of any type. It may just be the actual router in this case here. Um, or a well, honeypot because there's a ton of stuff here, a ton of ports open. So you never know. But that's how you would search for a particular net block. Now I can also search for a specific operating system. And this one here, let's see if there's anybody still running Windows XP that show up in the banner as Windows XP. And again, this is only from what Shodan sees from its port scan, essentially, and what it gets returned in banners. So let's see here. SMB status looks like authentication enabled. Here's a Windows XP service pack two. <laughs> uh, looks like total results four. Wow. Looks like we're doing pretty good on that. <laughs> or at least they're not showing them uh, external here. Looks like this one is external. Uh, let's see. We got the internal, inter, uh, eternal blue SMB exploit because they use an SMB version one. So that's handy to know. Um, but yeah, so that's one way to find that out, Windows XP. Uh, but you can also look for specific IIS servers. So for instance, I can say, um, uh, da, 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 da. well, let's, let's do this. Let's do it by, let's do it by port. So let's say I wanted to look for pro FTP, the uh, servers out there that are operating on port 21. I would say the name of the actual application or VSFTBD or whatever it may be, port 21, and do a search for it and see if anything gets exposed for that. Now, in this particular case, when it says login incorrect, it's because Shodan's scripting or automation is pro probing and trying to just do an initial connection to these things. And it's not, like I said, it's not a tool that's doing any type of invasive attack. It's not breaking into your machine. If there is a block there or an authentication, it will stop it but it will let you know, okay, there is authentication on this particular one because it's saying that the login is incorrect. Now, there is searches we'll do in just a few minutes here to look for anonymous FTP servers where there's anonymous login allowed. But the good thing, or what we're trying to gather out of this is the version itself here because you would then look that up as a vulnerability under exploit DB or something to that effect if this was your particular target, right? So you start looking around, saying, oh, I got to port 21 open. There's the uh, NTP for time. This is likely an SSH port. They, they use 2222 in this case here. Yep, there it is, SSH. And uh, gives you a little bit of information about the SSH that's being used there. It looks like they still allow some older SHA-1 listed up in there as well. And uh, some 3 des. So we can tell this is probably an older version. My guess is maybe... I don't know. They say SSH 2.0, but you never know. It may be older than that, uh, version 1, what have you. But um, yeah, so this is just giving you some information about that particular target and what their attack surface is in this particular case. So pretty cool way to do that. I can also look by city. So if I wanted to find all uh, inter or public connected devices by, you know, in San Diego, let's just say, I would say city, colon, put the name in, San Diego. And let's see what we get for results. And again, you can couple this with other searches, like if you're searching for any IIS 5.0 in that area, you can also do that as well. So this will show everything that's in San Diego that's publicly you know, uh, viewable in this particular case here. As you go down through some of these here, you'll see a lot of 404s through two redirects, this and that, uh, bad request. But if you couple it with something like, mm, let's say IIS 5.0, 5.0, and I don't know if I need to put this in quotes or not, but uh, let me just put that and see what happens. So I may see, okay, yeah, so like this. And of course, you have to look at the actual banner itself because I've seen some results come back where it has 5.0 somewhere in the actual content, but it's not IIS. 
So in this particular case, we can see that this uh, Nathair ink, whatever, is still used in a very old version of IIS. And again, it may be a honeypot, but I don't. It, it's not picking it up as being a honeypot in this case here. So in this one, we can see that <laughs> the browser not supported. I'm guessing Shodan probably has some sort of uh, maybe like a Lynx browser where it's a command line browser. Who knows what they use for their automation. But you can see there's some ports open here. 44380, some very common ones that we see, some VNC. So uh, these are just attack surface things that we would say, hmm, okay. That's kind of like if I were to go do an NMAP port scan against another company, these guys have already done it for me, right? So that's kind of where you can couple that and try to find things like that, uh, which are more specific. You can also look by country. Now, if we wanted to do one just specifically on, let's say, India, and we want to narrow our results to just the country of India, we could do something like this. All right, so here we should get only results from India. So we got Mumbai right there. Some SMB version one, so this is likely vulnerable to eternal blue. So if a bad guy or a black hat, I guess you could say, who doesn't really care what the target is, they can kind of go down through this and look at this and see this SMB version one and say, hmm, I wonder if there's a possibility that I can run the Eternal Blue against this remote host here, and they would then try to attack it. So that's kind of the usage uh, that a bad guy would find for this particular thing here. Okay. Um, so here's some open SSH versions down there. Pretty cool stuff. Another way you can do it is by geolocation. So you can, if you know exact coordinates of some place that you're looking to get to, uh, maybe you looked it up on Google Maps or some, something like that, and you want to see if there's anything in our area, like this is maybe your geographical area, let's just say, you can do it by geo colon and then put in the actual uh, longitude and latitude listed right there. Uh, looks like we got some ones listed here. So this would be an example of one that's probably just somebody's house and they have this IP camera listed there as well. And when you click on it here, you can see there's an IP camera. Now, again, I wouldn't say this is perfectly legal here to get in and click on this and go in and try to try to tap into this and <laughs> see it, you know, because maybe there's maybe no authentication because we got a 200 OK. So maybe this particular IP camera doesn't actually have maybe authenticated to log into it or not. But we can see they're using a Linksys router or, or I'm sorry. Yeah, wireless access point right there. Um, so that's one way you can do it. And then uh, let's say we wanted to look specifically for a particular device. So in this case, let's say we wanted to look for any Citrix gateways. We can go ahead and paste that in like this. Title, colon, and then put it in quotations, the actual search. So in this case, Citrix gateway, let's take a look. And here we got 46,000 some odd results that come up here. We have a 200 OK listed on this, which is kind of interesting. So we wonder if that will actually go ahead and, um, you know, allow us to, to tap into it, which we're not going to do here on the screen. But uh, let's see, object moved, patchy. So this one is, it looks like it's open here. So this is a possibility that it may be one of those interfaces. And as you go down through, again, you can kind of see what their crypto standard is to see if there's something that's considered weak there that you can actually tap into. Um, but this is an example of looking specifically for a particular device. Now, in the past, I have seen these before where people have not actually authenticated or put their put their uh, Cisco router, let's just say, behind a, a firewall of any type. And you were able to click on the link and directly go to their dashboard. And, you know, effectively, if I if I was of bad intent, I could have changed everything on it. I could have changed the uh, MTU rate, everything. It was, it was crazy. I was like, wow, these people don't realize that all these things are <laughs> open to that. Now, another good one here is to look for anonymous logins. Now, in this case, it's very similar to how Google dorks do their thing, where you actually put in a specific phrase that you know will show up in the banner. So in this case, we can say 220 and 230 login successful are common ones to see whenever we do a successful login uh, with anonymous FTP. In other words, no username or pass, just the, just the username anonymous, no password, and the port 21 being the FTP. So we can find out there's 89,000 <laughs> that are showing up on banners. And you can see right here, login successful. In this particular case, if we were to actually go and visit this, right, we're not going to actually click on it and go through it, but if we were to go ahead and try to FTP into this, which is 
why are they saying TCP? That's kind of weird. For, I think they would just say the actual protocol itself. But either way, we know it's an FTP server. But you can see here, login successful, which means that Shodan, again, was just sending a probe out and anonymously just let you log in. This is a real problem. <laughs> real problem. And the, and the worst deal is that there's 89,000 results that came back such as this uh, as well. So, um, yeah, some real nasty stuff here. But if you want to find out if your specific target is, you know, that has this one here, you would then couple that with like, you know, a net block or geolocation or, or site or city um, to be able to find that out, right? So if you wanted to say, I want to find out how many of these are in actually, I don't know, the city of, let's just say Portland, I guess. So we can say city Portland and see if there's any of these particular ones that are listed there. And it looks like there's 49 of them in the city of Portland. <laughs> right, so you can kind of ooh, look at that Metro's FTP server. That doesn't sound good. It sounds like, uh, yeah, sounds like a government city citywide uh, government thing. Not good. Anyways, so that's uh, yeah, that's a pretty nasty one there to be able to uh, <laughs> find all those particular ones. Same thing can go for if there's an unrestricted Jenkins dashboard. Jenkins is something used to build uh, software, and uh, so if we do something like this. The 200 would indicate that the 200 OK came through in the banner response, which means that we were able to successfully, anonymously, just get into the dashboard itself. In this case here, it looks like it's a big IP redirect for, well, that's kind of strange here, why the Jenkins deal on it, but because um, that's usually a, uh, what do you call it, uh, load balancing. But anyways, either way. So here we can see, wow, some actual names of some. <laughs> Interesting. Here's a Synology web station, which would be uh, probably a NAS of some sort there. Wow, crazy. And looks like, it, like in this case here, it's just showing the 200 OK in this part. It's not showing the Jenkins. So that's where you have to kind of curate the results, right? Because some of these may not be, okay, that one's definitely Jenkins there. But some of these may not actually be Jenkins. Like if you click on some of these here, um, Wow, could be a honeypot. There's a lot of ports open there. Um, but probably Jenkins is somewhere listed in this particular here. But anyways, this is way that you would actually be very specific <laughs> about Jenkins web servers. Pretty crazy stuff. Um, you can also go over here and just look at Explore to just see what is the most searched thing. And what would you expect to be the most searched thing? Well, of course, webcam, because we're all a bunch of voyeurs, apparently. Um so if you just do this category here, it will show you all the different searches that are being used specifically for webcams that may be open. And uh, this is why people tell you, hey, put the, put the uh, tape over the webcam on your laptop, right? Because these things are publicly exposed in this particular case here. And it uh, looks like a lot of these may be honeypots. This is pretty cool how they added this. I don't remember them having this before. It's probably something pretty new. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Uh, but anyways, you can look for that. Let's close that out. Let's see what else they got here. Uh, da, da, da. Default password. Interesting. Let's check that out here. Probably like default passwords for routers and such, I would assume. All right. Well, let's take a little bit to load. There we go. Cisco configuration professionals installed on this device password. Okay, so this is just actually showing a text document that tells us what the default is. Doesn't necessarily mean that this is the default password, but uh, hmm, interesting, good stuff. But there is some, I think, where, let's see. They used to have one, let's take a look at these here. There used to be one where it was the, Admin, admin, I think that was back here. There it is. So like this right here, where the banner would return this particular deal where it would, where it would look. There was another one they had for routers. I remember searching before. And it would show the routers that had the uh, username of admin and the password to pass, <laughs> or one, two, three, four. Uh, that was always kind of interesting to see in that case there. These are just the top voted ones that we see. Uh, that's taking a bit to load up. Let's keep can keep going. Uh, okay, so yeah, like this one here, Netgear user admin and password pass. But this says unauthorized, 302, 302. Okay, here's a 200 okay. So possibly this one, um, maybe a honeypot, 
But this one looks like it may have the ability to just log in using the default admin and one, two, three, four listed on there as well. That's the IP camera one. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, here's some MySQL databases, SSH, some online Omega NAS devices. These are always a hotbed because a lot of people may just set up a NAS and not actually know about how to set it up behind a firewall and things. In this case, it looks like this may be possibly able to get right directly into it by clicking on that, which we're not going to do, but it would be somebody's NAS device and probably can get through there and start looking around through their files. Pretty crazy stuff. Here's another one here, a backup for this particular person. And uh, 200 OK. So, yeah, crazy stuff. So we're not going to actually go to it, but if you look at it, it shows the device probably down here. And if you go back here to the top voted again, there's a variety of different ones. This one was interesting. I actually got into one of these one time in a class I was teaching where we logged in and we saw this red light enforcement camera and there was another one that was a driver license, the one that takes a picture of your driver license. And it was no login at all for it. It was total anonymous login. And you could affect the, the yaw and the pitch of the camera. <laughs> I didn't do it, but I just saw that hovering over it. The ability was there to be able to change it. Um, but, you know, I definitely don't get into doing that. But in that particular case, some crazy stuff you can find on this show, Dan. But, uh, yeah, that's a, uh, a basic rundown of show, Dan, and some different filters you can use. And uh, this is a great search tool to determine what your company that you work for or maybe you're even your own home is actually exposing if you use a nas device of any type at your house and you want to see is it publicly viewable by somebody else is it anonymous login do i have these ports being exposed and shown on my actual house at my street address that people can visibly see right it's a great tool to be able to narrow that down uh, there is, like I said, a free account where it's limited on the results and how many searches per day you can do. But then the, the uh, pro account will give you the full, the full deal plus some other additional features, which are pretty cool. And there's also a command line version you can use. Now, you can also, when you get a free account, you also get an API key. And with the API key, you can put it into other OSN tools like Recon NG, Maltego, um, Spiderfoot, things like that, which are tools we will go over in our Intel Bytes series as well. So look for those videos. Um, but you can put them into there so that it would actually look for the information. Like the Harvester is a good example of one where I put in the domain for whatever my company was, but then I added a Shodan search to it as well using the API key and the limited number of searches I can do. It showed me a truncated amount of results, but it still worked. And they also, Shodan also has its own command line interface itself that you can use if you want to automate your searching uh, per day or whatever your limit is in that particular case. So Shodan is a great tool for OSINT. Uh, and we love OSINT, open source intelligence stuff. So I hope you guys are enjoying the series. Um, I've got some comments that we want some more of these type of things. So we'll probably continue doing some more Intel Bytes. I do want to do some more of my, uh, my other video series like pop, 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 another server drop. Uh, we'll do another one of those, and I think what we'll do is we'll do a packet analysis as well on an upcoming video using Wireshark and a, uh, uh, a breach uh, PCAP file that we'll go ahead and use for an investigative purposes to kind of show you what you should be looking for um, from a threat hunting's perspective or from a incident response when you're actually doing uh, analysis of either network attacks or maybe even malware analysis. Uh, but we're going to get into all kinds of cool different topics like that and also privacy and uh, OSINT in general and cyber threat intel. So I hope you guys enjoy it. If you guys enjoy the content, subscribe over at the uh, YouTube channel and uh, hit the notification bell. I try to put out one to two videos a week. I'm going to try to bring that cadence up a little bit more. Um, but yeah, that's uh, what we got rocking and rolling with Shakaraga and I. So I hope you guys enjoyed this particular video. Until next time, peace out, players.